Artie Buko is the new underboss. It's episode nine of season Artie's one. Artie's taking over. This is Artie's town, damn it. And you know what? I think if we was awarding an MVP, I'd give it to Artie. You know, because it's been eight, eight Tonys. But I think Artie took it from him, or was Tony still top man? It could be Artie, could be. Artie could have snuck in here, snuck in is it not, back is it, is, it, is it not mad? Some guy who's literally a chef, but Tony burnt his restaurant down. So he's a retired he's chef. He's, he's like fucking, he's a slip, chef in the kitchen. He's flipping burgers, and he's, he's been dealt a shit hand, right? But anyway, right, let's get into this episode, Boca. We kick off. We like a good kick off, right? But we're at school. We've got Silvio with Artie and Tony. They're watching their daughters play football. They're playing soccer. With the, they're being uh, coached by Don Housen, which is a pretty cool name for just some throwaway pedo coach. But thoughts on this football match? Because I thought it was some of the worst acting I've ever fucking seen. Yeah, um, it was terrible. I know, I know they're not professional footballers. Far from it, like, but Jesus Christ. Uh, and another thing, it was almost like they were using American football tactics. The guy's screaming like 44. It's like they're naming like American football plays. Hail oh, Mary, man! Silverback 44, you know, and it's like, what? <laughs> Money line 56. And it's like, really? It's like, you have a fucking football, mate. You just pass it to your teammate and put it in the back of the net. Yeah, I just I just didn't get, like, I mean, people, right, so people can type up the Sopranos, right? Hype it up to such a degree, but. You've got to be real, right? You've seen nine episodes. There's a lot of, like, her I mean, and I say horrendous acting. There is. That, like, this is horrendous acting from the kids. And it, there's there's even more horrendous acting from the kids later on. I get it. I say kids, so they're fucking, they're teenagers, man. I just feel like this was very phony. Like, What do you mean? What was the horrendous acting, them not being able to play football? Aye, and then you've got, like, the fucking mobsters marking in at some match. It's, like, you would think this is the Milan Derby. The way Tony and all were getting on. Why would that, fucking what? Silvio's on the pitch demanding demanding yellows? Why? I, I don't understand why Tony cares. So why 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 is Tony at his daughter's soccer game yet he's happy to let his son sit around the house being a fat slob playing video games? I mean, shouldn't Tony be saying to Mido, no, you're not playing soccer, you're gonna Go and learn to cook or something. I'm not being. I'm just being honest with how you know traditional like Italian families would be, and especially back then, you're a gangster. You're not going to believe in this like, equality piss. You know what I mean? It's like I, I thought Tony would have had his priorities straight. Like no, I, I, absolutely. But Tony here, he's he's like the, AJ wasn't even in this episode. Does Tony Junior or whatever he's called? Is it a little fatty? Does he play any sports? He does, but he just gets bullied. I'm pretty sure I, I can recall. But they they wonder right. They wonder, but they're drinking with the coach. The coach is all poly poly with them. And again, I don't know, I just thought this relationship with the coach for the first 20 minutes of the episode was pretty weird, but I digress. And then Junior, he has to lay low as lawyers tell them because things are heating up and the indictments haven't went away. And I just don't understand how this Junior guy's even in any sort of leadership role, man. The guy's getting changed in the golf club, which is a wee bit later on, but I just have to talk about the guy's physique, man. I well, <laughs> yes, what, 70 odds? Like, I know, but come on. He looks like a bag of I know shit, we didn't like. see Piney without any fucking, like, his patch off or whatever, but come on. Uh, this is, this is, I just wasn't really all for this, like, See, you? to be the leader, you need to have leadership, authority, kind of skip. There's, it's not that, it's... Just, <laughs> like, men lead, but, I mean, surely once you are beyond s certain like, physical attributes, then you, you can't really be a leader anymore, can you? No, yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean... You can be a shot caller, but leader? Different. Like, I think a leader should be able to kind of, like, set by example. Like, I mean, should, I, I personally just don't think a, a frail 70-odd-year-old guy would be, would be leading. That's yeah, my, my opinion. But the mo I guess the mob is kind of uh, is kind of different. We then cut to Tony and Artie. They're in. Okay, but let's look at let's take show let's take let's, I don't know, let, let's take Sons of Anarchy for example, right? Clay, he is old, but he's still very capable. He still he can still handle himself, right? He there's a reason, shotguns, man. There's a reason why Clay. Like, imagine Penny being president, or who's the guy with the throat thing in prison? Lenny, Lenny, Lenny. pimp. It just it wouldn't really work. I don't think you can have a leader that isn't physically 
like able to take care of himself or or defend himself. No, I agree, but I think in the mob it is kind of just different. So he, uh, well, all right, fair enough. And, and plus, think. Tony manipulated Junior and the Hink and he's taught man, but in reality, he's just I, like I, I truly get that, fall. but like, even if you take over, let's say, like, we don't like it, but let's say The Walking Dead, for example. Now, Rick might get his ass kicked in a lot of fights, but he gets in the fights, you know what I mean? He's, he's willing to have a square go. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason why Rick's the leader and not, let's say, Herschel. Even though Herschel is playing, uh, uh, like he has leadership qualities or whatever, and he's wise, and he can like direct Rick and advise Rick, but I just think the leader needs to be physically capable. I agree, and, and Junior's not. I mean, of course he can fire a gun. Like, I mean, I, I just think if it came to a scrap, he'd be, he'd be oh, of course he'd be humped. But then, I, I mean, I w- I'd argue that with most of this crew. I, I don't see who's actually, I mean... Paul, Polly, Silvio, they're not fucking built, they're kind of just a bit, I mean, Polly's old, No, he's not fucking... Chris is like, the guy that's close to, closer to his prime, but, I have the feeling that Chris is a shite bag, but can he fight his way out of paper bag? Exactly, but Artie Bucco can fight his way out of paper oh, bag. Big Artie, he should be the leader. He's sitting down with Tony having a meal, and again, why are these two sitting alone having a meal? It's like, it, it, this episode, honestly, if you just tuned in, you would think Artie's like one of his top guys, until like... Five minutes before the end, where he, Tony wises up, but he spots a guy wearing a cap in the restaurant. And then he goes over, he's like, Take the cap off. He's like, No, I'm keeping my cat on, dude. And then, like, he kind of looks at his girlfriend, Tony, and then the guy looks at Tony and he's like, All right, I'll take it off. <laughs> and then Artie's like sitting in the background rubbing his hands like, Oh, yeah. Artie, this was petty for Artie, honestly. He fucking spat the dummy because some random guy didn't even know was wearing a baseball cap inside a restaurant. And then when Tony went to do something about it, his arse collapsed. I mean, what's it to you? It's a baseball cap? Fuck me. Ah, oh, the traditions, T, the traditions. But then Meadow, they're drinking, they're doing the whole paper br- br- uh, brown bag thing, right? Where it's, we're supposed to keep it hidden that we're drinking. We're in the park. It's like if you're in the middle of nowhere and no one knows you're there, then what is the, the real problem? But Ali, top... Cristiano Ronaldo, Ronaldo well, even, striker. Let's be real. Even if they were in the streets, right, in public, wouldn't it just be drawing attention to yourself on a paper bag over your drink? No, because that, that, they brought out that rule. America, where if you had a paper bag and didn't know what you were drinking. That's how retarded America is. The, the police what? Came. Yeah. So the police walk past, like, someone that's 14 and they're drinking it. They can't say here. Well, see, right, seeing the wire... The, the police chief brings this up and he says we're going to do it with drugs and he legalises drugs within a certain city block. So if, they do, if they do it in a paper bag sort of deal. So if you, if you stick your nose in the paper bag and start snorting, you're alright because they don't know what's in the paper bag? I, yeah. That's fucking retarded. To that degree, yes, essentially. But anyway, we're not talking about The Wire. That's another HBO show. We're talking about The Sopranos, right? Tan of the rest. You want to see The Wire refuse? Let us know in the comments below. But Tony, like, well, Meryl's friends, Ali's tan the rest here, but we're not really aware of why. Even though in the opening the coach tells Ali like go, go on shoot and it was like a really weird wasn't it? Remember nah, it was that? Like, come on. Like, I, like I'm a fucking Chris Hansen nonce take a seat which was definitely going on here but Tony and like Carmela and the rest of like his crew are wanting this coach to stay but you can clearly tell that no one like none really? of the girls yeah. none of the girls want him there and Meadow even tells him to fuck off which um gets her 20 laps 20 laps in the post but Polly then delivers a 50 inch television to the coach's house and he fuck it, he just tells Polly and the two guys where to go. I don't, I, this guy will not be intimidated. And his he, fucking he, dog barks him down the driveway. And, and they just leave? It's like, you wouldn't be like, yo, you better take this TV, buddy. <laughs> no, no they, Polly and the other two guys that can they barely even lift the TV just do a 180 and leave. And but the big coach is looking like he's the head man, top man. It's, it was very weird. Yeah, and then like, Literally, like, one of the next scenes is Christopher taking his dog, and then he, he comes to the door and says, Ah, your dog's out here? And he's like, No, the dog's upstairs. How could Christopher got his dog if it was upstairs? Jumped through the window. Junkie, like, I don't know, but yeah. Maybe they got Brandon's ghost to go and rescue the dog. The threat is we golden retriever, and then Christopher lets it back in, but would, would the guy be completely aware that this was the mob? I guess he would be. But when you add, when it would just be a bit of a coincidence. Yeah, they offered me a TV and they randomly got my dog. Like, but he doesn't know Christopher's in it. you never seen Christopher. I know, but still. It's a but bit again, strange. right, why is Christopher and Polly, two guys who are high up in terms of characters in this show, being treated like bums? They're getting, this is what the Georgie guy at the bar should be doing, even though I don't think he could threaten a, 
a dog with no ears, but you get you get where I'm coming from with that. Mm -hmm. I don't get that. Tony then is basically freaks out at Meadow. He's like, "What the fuck's up with you? We need we need this coach." He, he's trying to put the coach over, and then she's like, "The coach had sex with Ali." Damn it! So what about the coach? Is Tony going to make the right decision? Before we get into it, was the coach worthy of being killed, or was letting him get arrested the right thing to do? What age are these girls? I'd say they're about 16. He said 11th grade, Silvio, didn't he? I don't know what 11th grade is. I'm going to they assume They seem it's... older than 16 to me, but the fact that they, they made a big deal out of this tells me they're not... I still think it would be a... But, but, but you know what the thing is? It's like, oh, she 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 wants him to leave his wife and they'll, they'll, they'll get married sort of thing. So it's not like he's... Compl I mean, I know you could still say he's groomed or blah, 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 but... What you're saying is it's like a two-way thing? Yes. It's not like Sons with the clown just rapes the kid. Yeah. But here, I mean, Artie, Artie's thinking about it, he's talking to his wife, he's like, oh, sure, man, we need to kill this guy. I've been thinking about it all my, what if it was my daughter, brother? And then Tony's, like, counting doors, and we see him talking to the, his shrink about killing him, but then he kind of freaks out and says, oh, you people would just give him therapy, then tell him it's alright, and he'd be walking the streets within, like, two years. And then, Artie, rap on the door at the Bada Bing Club, he says he needs a few minutes of Tony's time, and Tony just drops everything. He tells Christopher and Polly and Sylvia to uh -huh. fuck off. Artie, more insulin. Paying all this money to dealing with Artie, it's like, what the hell? No, and then, and then Artie's like, oh, you got call off, we're calling this off. As if he's got any sort of leverage or like, no. and, and Tony's like, listening to it. He's like, yeah, yeah, and then he, then he just clicks it, he's like, you know what? Fuck you, Artie, you're a bum, I'm no doing this. But, yeah, but let, let's get to the other scenes. We've got Junior, he's back for Boca. His, his, well, just his mistress is actually his girlfriend. Well, 16 what year's it set in, season one? 98. Well, was that when it came out in, or is that the year the actual show's set in? The, the, it's, it's, the episode one's July of 98. I'm not saying that, I'm saying, like, what age, what show, what the, season one, like, what year is it set in? Not what year it came out, like... What That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. It's set in July 98, the first episode. It came out in 99, though, the episode. Right, so the show's based on 98? Yeah. Well, that would make her, what... Hmm, Mida was born in 1982, so... Hmm, 16, 17... So the friend could be a year younger, maybe a year older. Yeah. The jury is out on Judge Don Hansenberger, but, uh, aye, we'll get to, we'll get to him a bit later on, but... What about these scenes, man, with Tony and Junior? Some of the pettiest stuff you'll ever see, isn't it? At the dinner table? No, fuck, dinner table, golf course, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, well, yeah, so they're making fun and he's talking about how, um, how uh, Junior likes sushi and all this stuff, and he's like, under, he's, he's talking about <laughs> like, underswing, and then Junior's firing back at the fact that, well, you know, Tony, he doesn't quite come out with it, but he kind of, you know, insinuates that Tony's head's gone, and that he's, that he knows about his um, therapy, even though he doesn't come out and just say that, but he, he drops, like, subtle hints, and it's, it is very fucking petty. I guess everyone in life can be petty, but you would just think these two would be beyond those little. Um, ah, but you, you can see but... that they're of the same spade. They have these wee outbursts that leaders should not have. Like, even at the dinner table, not as much these two in this one, but it's like, why do these even have dinner together? They can't stand each other. Yeah. Like, they literally. Although, can... when they're having dinner together, there's always other shit going on. You'd think they're actually getting along. No, no, you would like fucking grandma or whatever she's called. That bitch is always causing problems. But you've got you've got Silvio and and uh, Mikey uh, Junior's number two just standing there, sitting there like what what are these two even arguing about? But Mikey thinks Tony's up to no good. But then back when Junior and him are getting changed, Junior like tells him, "Ah, he's going to see a shrink." And then and then Mikey's like, "I fucking knew." He's like, "You didn't know shit, you fucking spastic." I like that for Junior. I mean, he may be a decrepit bastard, but he set Mikey in his place. But, again, Mikey's like, what, take him out? And, again, it goes back to the pettiness. Junior is, is Junior willing to kill Tony because he's pissed him off, or is it because he genuinely thinks he's ratting the psychiatrist? I don't think he really believes Tony's a rat, does he? But then again, I guess... But that makes him petty, then. That makes him, like, he's literally going to kill him, because... Or maybe he thinks that Tony it could be spilling the beans, because you're allowed to do that with those psychiatrists. Whatever you say is confidential, unless it's like a risk to somebody. But who knows? 
Could be paranoia. I mean, I mean, it, 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 could, it could be that. You've got to keep in mind, Junior's like old school, so the thought of even Tony speaking to a psychiatrist is going to be news to him. And then when he, if he thinks that Tony's blabbering about all their, their business deals, then... Okay. I know, I think, I think you should know, though, that Tony's not really going to rat like Ben. Anyway, back back to the task at hand. Junior, we get the end in Montaz. Junior walks into his girlfriend's office. She's like, oh, Junior, you didn't cut. And then he just grabs this, like, he's going to punch her. And then he just Lemon grabs... Lemon meringue pie. And he just smashes her. It was... Again, it's kind of... Pie face. Like, it is kind of funny, but it is kind of, like, cheap. And I don't know. Uh, I, I was a bit... Especially, I, I don't know, I just feel like it, it, but then it makes Junior look really bad if he just walks in and fucking decks her, but then again, that's kind of what they did, isn't it? Like, yeah, guy of his generation, born in the 20s. Yeah. Well, bear in mind, like, this guy's born in the 20s, like, I doubt he would have done this. It's not even his wife, it's not like he's had kids with this woman, just no. some fucking jobber. And then, Tony phones Silvio, he calls off the hit, we see on the news, uh, coach get arrested so was that the right choice that will be a fairy fed but you know what i'm gonna go and say yeah yeah i don't think he deserved to be off like i mean it's definitely a sleazy thing, i don't like, think i mean a if, sleazy thing that he's doing like but i mean it's i guess i don't know you know, uh, it's not complete. It's not the worst thing I've seen in TV shows. You know what? I mean, if they kill well, him, I did, wouldn't have. Com- Mido did say that she he's sleeping with her, and she didn't say that he raped her. Like, I suppose it's not because it's consensual, and I know. it is a bit sleazy. Like, into I guess, but that's yeah. the thing. It's hypocritical. You, you mean you, you, you've Tony and like all his crew will be sleeping with eighteen-year-olds, nineteen-year-olds, but what the coach is sleeping with a seventeen-year-old, and he's a bastard. Yeah, I mean, fucking look at Tony, like, I mean, the guy's, the guy's not exactly clean himself, is he? No, he's a fat, greasy pig. Anyway, though, that is the end of the episode, as Tony just passes out on his couch, drunk. And if anything, it felt like, it, it, it seemed like the, 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 the striker, or whatever she's called, Meadow's friend, it seemed, it seemed like she was hurting herself more over the fact that, um... It's not, it wasn't really that the coach was heart and heart. It was more the fact that he wouldn't leave his wife. and he wa- It was like the coach was trying to... From what I got, it was like the coach was trying to break things up between them and put separation between the two. And she wanted more. That's what I gathered from it. Like. That's what I gathered from it. But I'm just glad his wee golden retriever didn't die. But could the golden retriever get a high rating for this episode? I thought some really weird acting at points. I mean, I, I'd say it was probably one of the funnier episodes of the show so far. So Probably... I'm, I'm going to give it a 7. I enjoy it. I'll give it a 7 as well. It was good. It was alright. It was Decent. good. It was good. And we're giving MVP that's non-existent to Artie Bucco. Will he ever? Will he ever get the seat at the table like Unser wants? They're very to... similar characters, I think. Alright, I'll have to find out. We'll have to find out. But anyway, guys, until episode 10, that one is called A Hit is a Hit. So until then, peace.